Hello and welcome to my channel Making Crafts. Today I'm going to be working on creating a flip out pocket for this journal and this is the vintage spring journal but now I'm calling it summer journal because it's taken me a while to work on it but it still has the images in it that's perfect for summer so I don't think it's just a springtime journal. So I have several videos creating this working on projects for this journal and I will link to all those below in a playlist but today we're going to make a pocket and so I've gone ahead and cut the pieces to make this a little faster and so I'm using single-sided paper so you know one side is printed and the other side is white so I'm going to show you how we're going to deal with that and so first let's just go ahead and take the pieces and stencil them and decorate them up and then we will um, I'll give you all the measurements to create this and we'll create this together so I'm going to start out with some of my larger stencils to fill in an area pretty quickly. And the colors I'm using, as you can see here, are the turquoise colors. There's a lot of turquoise in this journal. So I'm going to use some blue ink as well as some um, brown ink because you can see there's a lot of brown to this paper as well. And I'm looking for my inks. Oh, here's the brown one. And then the blue one I did put away. Let me get that out. Okay. So we're going to start out with our blue ink first and I'm just going to start stenciling in. Now like I've done for the other pages when I showed you in the previous video, it's not necessary always to fill in the whole area with your stenciling but we'll see. I may with this one and I may not. I'm just going to add a little bit of color to this white background so that's good. And I'm going to put that back on it. But I'm just going to offset it just a little bit. Um, let's find my ink, my sponge. I'm going to offset it just a little bit and add a little brown to the edges. Just a little. Add a little brown in there just to grunge it up a little since that is how the paper is. And I kind of want to match it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I like that. So up here we need to do something. I don't know if I want to continue. I could do the whole pattern up there, right in the center. Let's center that little flower up there in the center. And then let's do that in blue and brown again. That's pretty. So this will be mainly covered up. You'll see in a moment. So we're not going to worry about it, it all matching. And then here at the bottom, let's use the same stencil again. This time we're just going to do just a little bit on the, the bottom part of it. So this is actually going to be a pocket down here, so we just want to make sure that we have enough covered up. Okay, that's a little sneak peek of what we're making. Okay, and so then inside of this one, we can use a totally different stencil. And I think what I want to do is come in with this one. And it may be hard to tell what it is. It's just a simple design. I'm thinking I want that one. Or let's go... with one we used in the previous video. I like this one. Let's go with this one. Oops. And once again, the papers for it is going to be this one, the blue and the uh, cream color. So I'm just going to lay this across here. And I'm trying to think. I think I'll just add a little bit of... I'll add this one first, and then I have an idea of what I want to do. We will see if it works. I thought I might as well do this project while I had my stencils out still. Hadn't got this cleaned up, so this is probably getting off a little bit. Yeah, it's okay. I may want to do this darker, but it's probably too late now. Come in with a little bit darker blue. Let me see what this one 
piece of scrap here, see what color. Oops. Hmm, it's not gonna match. So I'm not gonna use that. Put these up and let's just come in with maybe a little bit of stamping. Stamping. Um, looking around to see which stamp I want to use. So what if we use what if we use some of this script stamp from Tim Holtz and just add it in? Then we'll add it in with the blue. So it kind of blends in with our stenciling. Stenciling. I say stenciling. I leave off the G. That's just me. I catch myself sometimes I'm saying my words incorrectly, mainly when I'm filming. I don't really pay attention to it when I'm not. Okay, I like, I'm liking that. Just adding a little bit more texture to all of this. Since we don't have double-sided paper, just want to add a little something in. And kind of want... Let's just put this here and see. Feels like we need a little something more, doesn't it? It's almost as though that's more of a green almost as though we need to kind of come in. Let's see here. Let's see if this is going to be too dark. I'll put it on a piece of scrap again. Where's that scrap I had? I don't know. Oh, here it is. So let's just see how dark that is. Kind of, it does match. So I'm just going to come in and just start inking. Or inking. <laughs> I'm really noticing my leaving off my G's today. Inking. But yeah. So I'm just going to do that. I think that's just going to add a little bit of color to it instead of such stark white background. There we go. I like that better. I wonder if I could lay this stencil back over it and get it exactly like it was, or closer, or close to what it was. Just looking here to see if I can. That may be impossible. I might can get it. I want that blue to be a little darker, or at least in some areas it could be darker. So we can always, I have lots of single-sided paper, so we can always use our single-sided paper. We just have to, that's a little off, but that's okay. We just have to um, come up with ways to, to, you know, to decorate the back side if the back side's going to be showing. I'm just going to add a little bit up here in that green, whether it's, it's not showing so that I don't have to line it up. So that looks good. Okay, so I like that. Um, come back with that green. I want to come in around the edges a little bit more. Just to get rid of all that white. I do like that. It's hard to see on camera, I think, because it's very faint. We have that. So I want to come back in with the green down here as well and just kind of blend. It kind of makes the stencil go to the background a little bit. But it kind of blends it all in, gets rid of some of that white. I do like that. And where's our other piece? I think I want to do that with this piece as well. Kind of fill in that white area. More so with the green. All these colors kind of blend well together anyway. And this, all, I think these, all, these colors, the green and the blues, I think they came in a um, pack together actually. And so they all do great together. They're very old, so I don't even know if they sell them that way anymore. I've had them for several years. I say very old, but I'm not really sure how long, but I know I've had them several years that way. I like getting the small ones just to sample them. I'm not worrying about all this white because we're going to cover it up. If we don't, we'll fill it in some more. Um, I think that's all we need. So let's move all this out of the way so we can start our project. 
So we're going to take it here. I've got these pieces. So a lot of these pieces were strips left over from my last video. So if you've seen my last video where we created some pages for the journal out of some single-sided paper, this is the same paper some of these strips are. And then I did cut some extra strips. Look at all the ink. Let me see if I can wipe my hands. So I did cut some extra paper, but it's from the same paper pack, so it would all go together. But I'm using up my scraps as well. So I want to start out first with this piece. And let me measure again, make sure I tell you right. It is 12 inches tall. And so then what I did was I scored, I put it in my scoreboard, and I scored at 4 inches. So this piece is 8, and this piece is 4 inches. And I'm doing that because the, my pages are 8 inches tall. So then I cut another strip 8 inches this way and the same width, 4 inches wide. And so then I've scored this one at 3 quarters of an inch. And then I've just folded it up that way. So what that's going to be is a flap so we can attach it here at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and attach that. And I didn't refill my art glitter glue, so I'm just going to try to use Fabri-Tac. If it will come out today, it's... It's time for a new bottle. Well, it's time to thin this one, but it's almost time for a new bottle, too, I think. Okay, so then I want to just attach this, but the bottom of this piece here needs to be right inside of our fold line. So don't glue it on top of your score line or your fold line. So you want it to be able to, if, if you do, then it's going to be hard to fold it up. So that's how we're going to do that one. So let me press that down good. Okay. So then we're going to open this up. So I've cut this strip here to be 8 inches tall, the same height as the inside piece here. And then it's about, I think it's 2 inches wide. Yes, 2 inches wide. And so then I've just come in and just punched a half, you know, half circle out, and then I've inked it. Where's my circle punch so I can show you in case you are new to creating journals? I don't want to confuse it. So I'm using a 2 and a half inch, but you can use any size you want. And then you bring it in and you just nip it and that away, and then I've inked around it. I've got it ready, so that away, um, there was not a lot of, there was a lot done, so you didn't, it wasn't, this video doesn't get too long, I should say. Okay, so for it, I'm just going to glue across the bottom here, and then across the top edge, and then down the side of the um, edge that's going on this side here. So we don't want to glue on the side where we have our thumb hole punched out. Now, in the background, you may hear my basset hound. A little fussy. It's getting close to supper time, and she is put up in her crate right now because she I always put her up in the afternoons for a little rest. And so um, she wants out. So I'm going to have to probably pause and go get her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and ink around these in brown, the edges and stuff. But right now, we're just going to put this together. So down here, I was not thinking. We stenciled in the wrong area because... Our pocket isn't going here, which it could. I was wanting to put our pocket here. So what, hmm, now should I change it and just put our pocket here since we've already stenciled it? I guess it wouldn't matter. We could just put our pocket right here and put things in it. We're just going to put it that way this time, and then we'll make another one, and we'll do it the other way. But this pocket, okay, I forgot to tell you, I think this was a scrap. But this pocket measures four inches, you know, the same width across, four inches wide, and it is four inches tall, so it's just a square. And then once again, I've just um, cut out the little thumb hole there, and then I've gone ahead and inked around the pocket. So everything's been inked around except for the pieces that I'm able to ink around once this is created. So I'm just going to attach it. This kind of looks upside down, but it'll still be okay. It'll hold everything in, and then it'll fold up. I'm just going to attach it right there. So what I was saying was I glued this pocket on upside down, but that's okay. You can still tuck things in. It, I really wanted to have it here at the bottom, but it doesn't matter either way. And then you'll just fold that up, and we're going to fold this down. But we have more to add. So I have this piece here, and I've got a lot more to do to it because I haven't inked it, and I haven't... Um, finished some of the pieces for it because I've got to think about this really quickly how I want to do it. So this is going to be like a little folder but I want to ink this real quick. 
Okay, so I decided to stop and go ahead and ink around this before I started adding more pieces. And this is our next piece. It's going to be a little folder. Oops, I missed this side inking. I want to go ahead and ink it before I attach it. So this one is going to fold up. So let me just see here what I'll need to ink. I've missed a few spots. Okay, so we need to cut ourselves a little hinge. So I do have this scrap piece here that's about, it is exactly an inch wide. So I'm just going to use that as my hinge. So I'm just going to trim it down to match the size of my little folder. And then we'll, and what we're going to do is you can score it if you want to, but when I typically, when it's this, this small, I will just fold it in half. But here's the thing, if your paper is super thick, and it's, this one's fairly thick too, and it's hard for you to fold in half, just score it then. That'll make it a lot easier for you, but I'm just going to do it this way. So i got to make sure i got this right side up, it goes this way. So what we want to do is we're going to take this hinge and I'm just going to attach it to the folder here just like this. And I want to make sure this is correct and then this is going to be added here. So that's correct. But I don't want the white to show so I'm going to have to take and fold it the other direction. So if you're folding along with me, switch yours around real quickly. So you want to fold it so that the white is on the outside and the... Um, and your print is on the inside in order for this to work correctly. Okay, so then we're just going to add glue to this. But let's not do that yet. Let's set that aside and let's work on our folder here. So I've got this one. It's about four inches tall, but I think that's just too tall. So I'm going to trim it down. I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. I think we should be. It should be more closer to maybe three. No about three inches tall. So let's just cut that one down to three inches. I tried to cut everything ahead of time, but then some things, you know, um, I'm having to just do as I go, because I've never put this together. This was just an idea I came up with it today that I wanted to make for my journal. It, I saw something similar to it on Pinterest, but I didn't see any, any, I didn't see any instructions on how to make it. It was just on there, and there really wasn't any instructions, so I decided that, um, I would try just to come up with my own. And mine's a little different, but I'm just doing it the way I wanted it. So what we're going to do is we're going to first fold this piece in half. So once again, it measures three inches by, um, well, by the width of this folder. And so this folder is, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. So this folder is seven and a half folded in half. And then we're just going to fold. So this is seven and a half by three. We're going to fold it in half. And just score that down. There we go. And then, so we have that. So now what we want to do is we just want to come in. I'm going to take and, so let me think to myself, I have to get my head wrapped around it. So I want to come in this direction and I want to cut a V out. So if I want to cut a V out, then I need to just cut like this. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to go all the way down really close to the bottom. I think that hopefully that wasn't too much. That way it's still attached in that way when we open this it doesn't just bind up or when we close it it doesn't bind up. So let's glue. Well I want to ink first. I want to ink these inside edges before I glue them down. Being really careful with it because um, I, I cut really close and I may not should have cut that close but it's what it is so and I'm sorry about the ink making that loud noise every time I tap it. So then we're just going to add it to the folder here. I love this paper, how it went and slanted down. So I chose that spot on this paper because I thought that would be pretty like that. So we're just going to add glue across the um, sides on each side, the left and the right. Oops, that slid a little bit. The left and the right and then across the bottom. We're just going to go all the way across the bottom here with our glue. And then we're just going to attach it to the folder. And there we have us a little folder for our flip out. And then I want to attach this to my piece here. I don't even know what to call this piece, but my flip out pocket, I guess you call it maybe. And then I'm just going to attach it here. About, I want to center it up. So I made it so that they're I think about a half inch from the top and bottom. And then we're just going to press down. 
flip that over and press. Now we're not going to see this side, so we're not going to worry about that, that being that that's white because that's going to glue down to our page. And so now what we want to do is fold our folder up, and we want to glue. So we're going to you see your folders opened. If you over here on the if it's open, it's going to be your right hand side. We're just going to add glue here and attach it to our flap. So I'm actually going to add glue to the flap just like this and then I'm just going to attach my folder and so what you want to do is just lay it down here like it would once you fold it in how it's going to be it's going to be right inside here and just press and then we can open it up here and press and we can flip it out make sure it's lined up like we like it and so you see why we folded that that way so when we glue it down we actually see um, pretty paper instead of white paper now it is a little taller I'm not gonna worry about that I'm fine with that so when you open it up here you do see that white so what I'm gonna do is just come in with a little bit of ink and just ink that edge there we go and we could flip this out and try to ink the tops and the bottoms as well so it's not such a stark white it's not that big a deal either if you can't get it and so then we have our folder put together, but now it's time to decorate it. So let's see how it looks first. Oops, my glue is laying down. Let's see how it looks before we start decorating. So we have our flap here. And I also need to show you the closure. We need to make a closure for it as well. And so this. So we definitely need um, something here and here. Or we can leave this plain. And leave it as a writing place I might get, leave this one as writing or you could add a photo there but um, and it doesn't need a lot on the decorating on the inside but on the outside it is super plain so we're gonna have to do something with this so I want to show you the closure and then we'll decorate it okay so now we are ready to add our closure so for this one I'm going to add an eyelet, so I'm just going to use my Fiskars. It has a hole punch on one end, and then it has the eyelet setter on the other. So I'm just going, and then I'm using the Dollar Tree mat because I don't want to destroy my black mat. I don't mind getting my mat, the black one, dirty and grunged up, and then I can just wash it. But now I don't like to cut holes in it. So this is four inches, so I'm just going to take my pencil, if I can find it, and I'm just going to mark the center. Normally I eyeball the center, but I just know today I will totally mess up. So let's just put it right there, and then let's put our hole right here. It is a little bit louder than the um, We Are Memory Keepers, but... I am able to set my eyelets so much better because I don't like when the eyelets on the back here break. And with the We Are Memory Keepers, I'm always breaking them. But with this one, I'm able to set them better. And so you can see it's a little wonky in there, but you can see that. There we go. Now you can straighten it up. But that looks so much smoother and so much better. I like that. So. That just makes me happier. So I'm not really sure. I pulled out ribbon because I was going to add something pink, but no. Then I pulled out the jute, and then I pulled out, this is just like some cord that I got to, um, I forgot what you call this. You could do macrame with it, but I got it at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to set that there. I think I'm just going to start out with this with the jute to close it up. I'm looking around. Let me look at my ribbon here. I have other colors here. I have a whole bin. We could just use some of this white. I just don't know about the sheer white with this. It does pick up some of the other the blues though. I'm just going to look real quick and then we'll see. I just have a shoe box of some ribbons here. I got a lot of these ribbons on clearance because our Walmart quit carrying a lot of craft supplies that one has a little bit of that blue in there so I'm thinking that might be the right one let's just decorate it first and then we'll see but one more quick Karen a lot of craft supplies so I bought all that ribbon up on clearance I've gone ahead and cut out this little um, butterfly topper card this one was from Artie Mays and then I have these labels that I just downloaded from Creative Fabrica I'm thinking about putting that label on there I'm not really sure though where I want it 
might look better under right there but then I feel like we need something down here I really think this should go up here hmm thought about putting this label sideways and then just trimming off a little extra and then I had another idea hold on just a second what if I just took this flower here I should have done that before I added the eyelet but we might could still do it and add some stencil in there I think I want to add just a little bit of brown stenciling just to finish off the stenciling here hopefully I don't mess it up but just lightly stencil this brown in just to get a little bit of that flower in the center there let's see what that looks like okay so I do like that and then you know it, when you open it up it's like that though it's cut in half we could oh we could take it and we can fix that let's just lay this on here find our spot how was that right get it all lined up take our time get it lined up so that it's perfect and then we'll just finish our little flower off lightly ink it in okay I like that so then I like how that works so then we'll just add our butterfly on top I could trim this down let's just see I have a whole sheet of these we can try we don't like how that turns out okay so I cut a different one out because I did not like it fussy cut so I'm just going to add that to the top here I just got to figure out do I want it closer to the top or more centered I think centered and then I'm going to add this I don't think it's I think it's going to be pretty on there I don't think it's going to look bad at all I'm just being kind of fussy with it now I'm not sure what I want to add I thought for a second I wasn't recording earlier I well not yeah I thought I was recording but I was not so I'm trying to kind of a little shy of it now keep watching to make sure okay so let's just trim this off and leave that there I think that looks good and then we'll add this here and we'll have it decorated up and then we'll add our ribbon and see what it looks like and if I don't like you can always change the ribbon out until you glue it down once you glue it down you're not going to be able to change it because you know you're gonna so you're gonna run it so that let me show you how we're gonna do it to close it up what I want to do is I'm gonna use this ribbon and I'm going to lay it behind here and see how much I need I want to make sure I have I want to have extra before I cut it off so that it all works so then I'm gonna take and bring this through now you could just bring it up here and tie it but I didn't want to because then that um, that will take away from my butterfly so I'm just going to wrap this around in here and I'll show you again once I get it done so I'm wrapping it now tight so it'll so that'll hang there and so this will be attached here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead trim this off and then I'm just going to run a bead of glue down the center here so we're going to eyeball the center right there and they're just going to put a bead of glue I'm going to have to wipe it off because it's bubbling out I think I left the lid off too long and then we're just going to run that bead all the way up the center here oops got a little off my line hopefully it'll so then we're going to bring this up and just glue it down so this is going to be hidden on the back of our page and so then we'll have our little piece hanging down here so then when you want to undo it you just pull right here now I did pull a little too tight and I'm it did kind of I may need to reinforce that with something I'm not sure yet reinforce this edge here where we where we're wrapping it around because when I do that it does wrinkle it up some so I might have to put a little label or something there but then what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it around coming underneath that piece and then back through like that and then just tighten it up and there we have our little pocket 
So I think that's going to look good. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that it has inspired you to try and create one and get out those single-sided um, cardstock paper packs that you have, the old ones you have that you've had for years, and see if you can create one for your journal. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.